What's up guys, it's been a while since I've done a Road to Masters episode, and the reason for that is because it's been hard to play a lot of games like I used to because of school. So I do apologize for the series becoming pretty slow over the next few months, but I'll make one whenever I can because I know a lot of you want to see it. Now on the last episode I had actually played with Dyrus, which was awesome, and I showed myself starting to climb through Diamond 4, and I ended the episode at 38 LP. Now, I'll just be honest, I've only played like 7 games since that episode 2 weeks ago, so there wasn't a whole lot to cover. And then when I was looking through, I realized it was win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. Nothing really happened, the games were relatively one-sided, and I just didn't feel like making an episode. That was until I played this game from 2 nights ago. This game was ridiculously close, and I feel like a lot happened, so I'm gonna focus in on this game for this episode. Today's video is once again sponsored by Haste, a software that optimizes your connection to the Riot servers and can reduce your ping depending on your location. I know most of you have already heard the spiel by now, but the opportunity to claim the service for free could run out soon, so I really encourage you to check them out. The link for Haste is down in the description. So the game starts off very interesting. I would say one of my biggest weaknesses as a jungler is my first clear. I feel like unless someone overextends to the point where it's an easy free gank level 3, I never really out jungle my opponent. I'm never really making the right decision, but here I feel like I play this correctly. I start taking Scuttle because I know I want to go into Wukong's jungle and have that as an option to escape. And when I take the Scryer's Plant, it reveals that Wukong is pretty low taking blue buff, which is just a beautiful sight because this gives me a free invade opportunity. If he tries to fight me, he dies, and if he runs, I get the blue buff. He backs off, so I put a ward down to see if he'll go back onto the blue, and I see that he does, so I go in for the kill. He wastes Smite for health back, but I made the mistake of smiting Scuttle Crab when I took it instead of just killing it, so I don't have Smite available at that time to take the blue buff. But I just dance around because I know he can't do anything without his team and they weren't responding. But with my red buff, I just chase him down and I get his flash here, which is nice. And here's where I probably make a dumb call. Now, taking his blue is what I wanted to do, but notice how I'm not talking to my laners. It's like I'm assuming that they see me, but they don't. And the correct play was for them to roam down and secure the blue buff and maybe fight if need be, but they don't roam and I get pincered on by all three of them. And this is a classic case of buyer's remorse. You put too much time and effort into something, you want to see it to the end. This is a mistake on my part, even though my team should have roamed up, I'd turn around to try and smite the blue buff before I get out, which was really dumb and a very low percentage play, but like I said, it was it was some buyer's remorse I was having. Um, regardless though, I give up a kill here and it really hurts my early game. And that made my early game pretty useless, so I end up farming for the most part until about level 7. Our bot lane was getting smashed pretty hard, so me and Cinder go for the double gank here. Cinder manages to take down the Leona, dies to the Varus, but then I clean him up, so we get a 2 for 1, which is definitely worth. But in the blink of an eye, our bot lane gets killed by their bot lane. But this is actually pretty nice for me because I have Ghost and Alt available and they were both low. So it's a nice easy scrap opportunity for me. And now I'm actually pretty strong with those kills that I get. But even top lane was losing pretty hard. But the Riven didn't really know her limits. And I just come top and catch her out overextended and get a free kill on her here. But while I was busy topside, they start to go for Dragon, which I knew they would do. But we just didn't have the reaction time to contest. There was a pick on their Ari, but Ari was the least of our worries. You know why? Because Ari doesn't build lethality. Their Wukong, Varus, and Riven all just stack lethality, and it's honestly getting old having to deal with that. It's clearly overtuned, and the fact that so many people abuse it gets under my skin. I know nerfs are coming, but I'm interested to see how far they nerf it. But regardless, we make a nice play on Wukong here on the escape. He should have just fought me because I'm low, but he goes on the Jin. Jin flashes out and lands the W, allowing us to take him out. And they were really aggressive for not being that far ahead, and they go for a blue buff steal here, but Varus is out of mana, Leona is pretty low, and so we just go on him here. We get a 2 for 1 and the blue buff, which further brings us back into the game. And then once again, I catch Riven not knowing her limits. I have red buff, and I'm Hecarim, so I'm pretty sticky, and I claim yet another free kill. And this is where the game gets intense. I was feeling in my zone, very confident with my calls, and I see Wukong, who's full damage pretty far out, so I don't even hesitate. I engage on him. Jin ult comes out, and we're able to pick him off, which is huge, because he's the issue in teamfights right now. Leona's also caught, so I leave her for my team and go for the Varus, who's just a free kill for me at this point. My E comes off cooldown, and I pick up the double and get his flash, 
and then I flank the Ari for the triple, and just like that, I feel like I'm hard carrying this game. Then we transfer that into a Baron, Riven tries to contest, but she gets taken down, and then here Wukong is once again caught out, which is great, it's a free kill, but unfortunately Cinder gets caught on the other side of the map, Wukong tries to escape, I let Camille take him down, she does end up locking him down, I just peel off because I'm worried mid needs me, but then Leona shows up, so I turn my attention to her, it should be a pretty free kill, but she actually makes a nice play here, she uses Blast Cone, which throws us both over the wall, and her team roams down for mid, so now I'm caught as fuck. I'm forced to ult out, but we're actually in a nice position to fight here. We have them completely flanked and pincered, and Leona ult is down, Wukong's dead, so we just decide to fight here. We destroy the Varus, I chase down the Ari. Leona then tries to escape, but that spells another free kill for me. And we pick up the ace yet again, and with Baron still on us, that means a free inhibitor. And then from there, we rotate over to Dragon, get a free Mountain Drake, and this game is just looking clean, like it's looking picture perfect at this point. Just a minute later, right after Baron wears off, Cinder gets caught by Wukong, legit gets one shot. I guess it's not entirely her fault, but this puts us in a bad situation. We have to win a 4v5 or just stall while she responds. And I actually feel pretty confident without Wukong ult that we can win the fight 4v5. So the fight breaks out, my team does a pretty nice job of peeling off and kiting backwards so they don't get melted by Riven. And I just focus my attention onto Ari and no one helps her. So I get an easy kill on her and now I return to help my team with the rest of them. And I was fucking feeling it this game. Hecarim is so fun to play in team fights. And I actually managed to stay alive and take down all three of them for the triple. But I'm not done yet, I see Varus and Riven lurking in rivers, so I trot my way down, make a nice dodge on the Varus Q, and fight the Riven, and the fucking pony, dude, Hecarim is so strong in these situations, and just like that, we get the clean ace as we take out the Varus in a 4v5 situation, and in all chat, they're tilting, they say good game, and I feel fucking invincible, I'm 16-2, and two, as we head into their base to hopefully end the game, but we're just not able to quite end the game yet, and the overstay occurs, Wukong just takes out my entire team in like 3 fucking seconds, I managed to do some work of my own but the bottom line is the game isn't over and they have three lethality champions hitting full build hecarim does fall off around this point in the game so i'm not feeling very good about that at all we are able to take baron when we spawn which hopefully is what we need to put the nail in the coffin and we march right into their base one more time to close it out it's looking pretty nice varus gets caught out until wukong yet again deletes nami forces me to back off and get health we end up rotating bot lane and getting the tower and inhibitor from that, but at the expense of Cinder getting caught in the mid lane, and they don't want to let us go, so another fight does break out. I use the little mana that I have left to help them out, but right here we chase the Riven, and Camille just gets killed for it, so we're still unable to end, but I mean, we're in control of this game, we just need to get our shit together and finish it off. But five minutes later, nothing has happened, and we can't crack their nexus, so we wait for the Baron and try to use that as our way to push an end. I start a fight on Ari here, this turns into a full-blown team fight. I don't know what happens to Jin here, but clearly he gets clobbered by Riven. And the thing is, I've got Ari and Wukong on me, these two are completely out of the fight, I just expect my team to win that 4v3. But as I go to finish off the Ari, I run into the rest of their team, and they're not even scratched, they're at full health, so I gotta peel off now. And just like fucking that, my team all dies, I get the Ari, but what the fuck, like seriously, how did we just lose that team fight? And at this late stage in the game with three lethality champs, like they can end the game off this. So I have to come back, I'm the only one up still, so I do what I can to defend them from ending the game. But like I said, with three full AD lethality champions, they just melt our base. Jin eventually spawns to help, but he gets one shot by the Riven, just completely useless. And I'm just a fucking broken pony at this point. There's nothing more to do. And that's it, man. Just like that, the game ends and we lose. Oh, literally the saddest game of solo queue I've experienced in a very long time. As you can see, the damage charts reveal a lot of what the problem was. You got a tank Hecarim dealing more than double than everyone else on my team. And Wukong, Riven, and Varus all dealing about the same. This is sad, man. This felt awful, and that puts me at Diamond 4, 21 LP. As we move into another Hecarim game, I just want to talk for a bit. It's games like those that really just crush your drive to want to climb. It's really discouraging, even for me, someone who legit preaches not to get down on yourself, not to take losses too harshly. It sucks. I felt and still feel pretty discouraged when I lose games like that. Looking back, there really isn't anything I feel I could have done differently to secure that win. And honestly, these are the losses that keep you from climbing. It's not the pub stomps where you're legit losing by 20 kills by the 20 minute mark. It's these games that matter. These are the swing games. Lose enough of these swing games and you're not going to climb. Win enough and over time you'll see yourself climbing. I feel like recently I've been losing way too many of these types of games. And I know I'm not a perfect player, far from it. I know I have bad games, 
I'm relatively inconsistent with my play, but when you experience these losses, there's really nothing you can tell yourself that's going to make you suddenly feel better about it. This is one of those extremely difficult situations that realistically you're going to have to experience and push through it. I'm not talking about one of these. I'm saying these are going to happen frequently and it's going to suck and you're going to want to quit because that's the easy way out, right? Like with anything, you're going to have setbacks, not just league. And you're going to tell yourself, shit, man, I feel like it's out of my control. Getting to where I want to be, it's starting to feel like I can't do anything more. And that feeling will force you to make a decision. Do you quit or do you keep going? And more often than not, people will quit. This game really is a perfect metaphor for real life situations, but for me, someone whose YouTube channel kind of relies on my progress, it's a little bit more pressuring to want to climb. The truth is, you're going to experience these setbacks all the time in life, and especially in this game, and fuck man, you just got to learn to push through it, put it in the past, keep going. Now in this game here, you can see that it's strikingly familiar to the last game. We had a pretty huge lead and we're starting to throw. And not gonna lie, the thought of throwing yet again was deep in the back of my mind and I was really close to getting tilted as hell. They actually get into our base here and just about end the game, but my team spawns just in time to defend and keep our base alive. And a few minutes later, we make a Baron call and it works out really nicely. We shred the Baron before at least can steal. And then we move our asses down to Elder. And this is where they decide to contest and this will make or break the game. Let's see what happens. So finally, I get the win and avoid throwing two games in a row, and it's a good feeling to come back from that awful throw and then actually close one out. It puts me at diamond 4, 40 LP, and I know my climb is pretty slow right now, but all that matters to me is that I feel like I'm getting better, more consistent, and at the end of the day, that's what leads to climbing. So that's where today's episode is going to end. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Until next time. I am floating, floating out to sea. Yeah, contrary to popular.